Hi, my name is Jessica Capaletti. I'm the Regional Preparedness Coordinator for the Western Central New York Region. Thank you so much for coming out to help us with our Sound the Alarm Save a Life event. The goals of this program are to save lives, reduce injuries, and build more resilient communities. Home fires are the biggest disaster threat facing American families, resulting in 2,500 average deaths a year. Disproportionately affected by home fires are individuals of low income, older adults, individuals with disabilities, access or functional needs, children under five, and minority communities. Working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in a home fire in half. Our live saving formula is home fire prevention education plus a two minute home fire escape plan plus working and tested smoke alarms equals lives saved. And our Western Central New York region has a confirmed 13 lives saved and the number is increasing. Going out on these installation appointments, your safety is our top priority. So just a couple of important safety reminders. Firstly, make sure that you have a fully charged cell phone and the phone number of your event leadership so that you'll be able to contact them in the event of an emergency. Familiarize yourself with your route prior to you leaving. Know where you're going and know how you intend to get there. If there are changes with your route, communicate that to your event leadership so that we have a general idea of where you are. Always stay with your team members and practice good situational awareness. Be alert and observant and use good common sense and judgment. Leave if you're asked from a home and always remember to be polite, friendly, and respectful. We consider ourselves guests in the home. Do not approach a home or do not remain in a home if you at any point feel unsafe. You might feel unsafe if there's yelling or fighting, the use of alcohol or drugs, any of that at any point, communicate with your other team members that you are, don't feel comfortable and the entire team can then leave the area. It's important that you always stay with your team members and if you do leave an appointment, everyone leaves together. Before you enter a home, make sure you have the permission of an 18 plus person. If you go to a door and a child answers and you think that they might be under the age of 18, ask and see if there's someone at home. If there isn't, we'll tell them that we can reschedule their home fire installation appointment. So some other home visit guidelines. The use of the residence restroom should be an absolute last resort. Plan on using gas stations, shops, or other public buildings, or even making a quick trip back to the staging area if you can do so. Unfortunately, we cannot accept anything when we're in the homes. This includes monetary donations, food, or drinks. Politely decline and thank them for their offering. If they do want to give a donation, you can direct them to the local Red Cross chapter. So some of the essential components of an in-home visit are we install up to three alarms in a home, in an occupied home. We cannot install in businesses or unoccupied units. We also engage the resident in a discussion on home fire safety prevention. We share the importance of working smoke alarms and testing them monthly. We assist the resident in creating a two minute home fire escape plan. And of course, we document all of these services provided completely and accurately. The first step of a smoke alarm installation appointment is completing a needs assessment of the pre-existing alarms that might already be in the house. This will include a walkthrough with the resident that lives there of the alarms that they might already have. We will check those alarms to see if they are under five years old. If they are under five years old, we can replace a battery and of course just test them to make sure that they still do work. If they're over five years old, we will replace that with our new 10-year ionization alarms. When completing this needs assessment, you might find some hardwired alarms. If this is the case, unfortunately, those can only be removed or replaced by a certified electrician. And even if you so happen to be a certified electrician, it is outside of our program parameters to remove those, so we kindly will put them back in place and leave them alone. We can still install up to three alarms in addition to those hardwired alarms. The needs assessment is also done to determine the best locations of where we can put our alarms. Some of the best options are on every level of the home, in living in common areas, outside of sleeping areas, on the ceiling leading to the basement, and some additional places could be in bedrooms 
or non-traditional sleeping areas. We do not install alarms in garages, kitchens, or near bathrooms. Try to install alarms at least three feet outside of all of those areas in order for there not to be nuisance alarms. Kitchen fumes, car fumes, and even steam from the bathroom can all cause nuisance alarms. Nuisance alarms might be annoying, but they also can be dangerous because our residents might remove that smoke alarm and then not have as much coverage. On your home fire installation team, you will be serving one of three roles, the installer, the educator, or the documenter. The installer responsibilities are to complete that smoke alarm needs assessment with the resident, install the three alarms, and demonstrate how to test and hush the alarms. Also, we want to ensure that the smoke alarms are being installed up to the manufacturer guidelines. So prior to installing, look through the guidebook that will be with the smoke alarm and make sure that you are versed in the guidelines. The installer also will instruct the resident on proper maintenance, keep track of all supplies and equipment, report all services provided, number of alarms installed and batteries replaced, to the documenter. If we are giving the household up to three alarms, we must make sure that they are all installed. We cannot leave smoke alarms behind if the resident says they'll install them on their own. Research shows these alarms don't actually end up getting installed. The alarms that we're installing are the Kitta 10-year ionization alarms. What makes them 10-year is the fact that you can't get to the battery. The battery is sealed in because after 10 years, the whole unit gets replaced. So they don't have to worry about changing the batteries for 10 years. Installing is as easy as two holes drilled into the wall mount and then clicking the alarm into place. When you click it in, it should do a chirp. And we will test it right there just to make sure we're, it will, that it will work. We install the alarms one foot from the ceiling and one foot from the wall. This is to ensure that it will detect, the smoke will be detected by the alarm. If it's too close to the wall, it might roll over. Of course, to do this, you might need a ladder. Some general ladder safety tips. Make sure you inspect the ladder before you use it. Make sure it's in working order. We also recommend having all four legs of the ladder on the same surface at the same time. So don't have two legs on carpet and two legs on tile. The ladder should always be in the fully open and locked position. When you open the ladder, you'll hear it click into place. The role of the educator is to engage in a discussion with the household on home fire safety prevention and to create the two-minute two home fire escape plan. Research shows that if you have more of a discussion as opposed to a lecturing type of conversation about home fire safety education, it's better received. You do this by going over the home fire safety checklist. There's a lot of bullet points on this document that we will go over. Um, and I always like to say it's just the reminders that we can all use. Some of the main bullet points that we will go over with them is in regards to cooking safety, as that seems to be the leading cause of home fire. We use the mantra, keep an eye on what you fry, never leaving any food unattended that you're cooking. We also remind them about fireplaces, space heaters, and baseboard heaters. For this, we say three feet from heating sources to cause unintentional fire. Smoking safety, never smoke in bed and ensure that all smoking materials are properly extinguished. Electrical and appliance safety, we wanna be sure to remind them about overloading electrical units and that extension cords are for temporary use only. Of course, we want to make sure lighters and matches are away and locked from children. As mentioned, the alarms that we install are 10-year ionization. However, it is recommended to have both kinds of alarms in the home, with the other kind being photoelectric. With that, individuals would have to remember to change the batteries of these different kinds of alarms every six months as well as replacing these smoke alarms every 10 years. We also create with the resident a home fire escape plan. And for this, remember the magic number two. Two minutes to get out of a house fire 
with two exits out of every room practiced twice a year. In addition to indicating two exits out of every room, it's also critically important to indicate a meeting place. The meeting place should be outside of the home on a non-movable location, something like the tree or the mailbox. It should be in the front of the home and it can be written on the home fire escape plan as our meeting place so everyone knows where to go in the event of a home fire. The documentary responsibilities are to complete all forms completely and accurately and also to assist the installer with holding the ladder and handing them the materials as they need them. The form that the documenter completes is called our service acknowledgement form. On this document, any boxes indicated with a red asterisk are mandatory boxes we must complete. Otherwise, the other boxes are strongly encouraged. The acknowledgement form is broken down into the top section being our services provided and the bottom section being some demographic information. This information is completely confidential and only used to show what communities we are reaching. However, if the client declines to share this information, that is their right to do so. The middle section is their signature only to, to affirm that we installed the alarms and that maintenance afterward is up to them. When completing the smoke alarm needs assessment, it might be determined that there are some individuals with hearing impairments. In this case, we would complete a bed shaker application if they cannot hear the smoke alarm without their hearing aids. The bed shaker applications are completed to gather follow-up information for them so that we can schedule another appointment to install a bed shaker alarm. Thank you for joining us in our mission to help save lives.